For our filling, you're gonna need some ground beef. Pick whatever you like. Don't feel obligated to use what I use. Whatever ground beef that you use or ground chicken is gonna work. We're gonna need one teaspoon of nor chicken bouillon. If you have the beef, use the beef. One teaspoon of powdered garlic. One teaspoon of black pepper. One teaspoon of onion salt. And one teaspoon of cumin. If you want a really good flavor, you need the cumin for this recipe. All right, my views club, what you're gonna do to your pan, you're gonna put it on a medium heat and you're gonna put one teaspoon of oil, just drizzle it in. Okay, and you're gonna wanna put in your ground beef, okay? Start separating your ground beef, like this. You guys already know, if you don't separate your ground beef, it is not going to spread. And we want it to be in little pieces. To this, you're gonna put your, put all our dry ingredients in here, sprinkle them around good. We're looking for a good sear, okay? Oh, I almost forgot to add my cumin, so go ahead and add your cumin. Once you add your cumin in here, your whole world turns upside down with that smell. It's so amazing. You guys, I have a special helper, Mr. Lone Star himself, my punky bio. <laughs> you want to help mix? Yep. Okay. okay so Can you handle that? Yep. Okay. Gently, okay? Okay. All right. Punky, where were you born? I was born... In Texas, in Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas? Oh, I don't no, think no. so. No, just Texas. <laughs> you were born in where? In Texas, yeah. yeah. Just Texas with no letters. What do you mean no letters? Just Texas. There's like that. Just Texas. Just Texas. Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> That's right, baby. You're my little lone star. Okay, let's keep cooking. Ingredient time! Okay, you need half a can of tomato sauce. I really suggest you guys use this hunt. It does make a difference in the flavor of this sauce. We're gonna start off with one and a half teaspoons of nor chicken bouillon, and you might need a little bit extra depending on your taste buds. And, whoo! Here we go! The Views chili powder for your Mexican red sauces. Oh yeah! We need half a cup of that, three-fourths of water, and some oil. Set your pan on a low heat, because you do not want to burn this chili, guys. This chili will not turn bitter, so you guys are okay, but you just don't want to burn your chili. So I probably have about a tablespoon of oil in here. Depending on the quantity that you're going to make, you might need a little bit more. When your oil gets warm enough, you're going to add... The, whole, the half a cup of the Views chili powder. Make sure it's completely saturated with the oil. Ooh, 
when you get when, once you blend it and incorporate all of it what you want to do is you want to give it a whiff that smells divine it is amazing Ooh, that smell makes me so happy let me show you guys the sizzle you're looking for you see that sizzle at that point we can go ahead and add the water If you want more sauce, you can add a little bit more water. Maybe about one fourth more. I'm gonna switch my um, spoon to a whisk just so that you guys don't have to hear all the smacking from that wooden uh, spoon. This thickened up beautifully. So right now we're still at a low heat, and at this point you wanna go ahead and add uh, your half a can of tomato sauce. And I probably have, I just poured a little bit of water, that's about one fourth, just so that I can get all the tomato sauce that's in here out, okay? Now you can turn your heat into a medium low. and add your chicken bouillon. So we have, we're starting off with one and a half uh, teaspoons and then that way you can start adjusting it to your flavors. Start adding about half a teaspoon at a time until you get the desired saltiness from your um, chile and the flavor that you're interested in, okay? So let me go ahead and give this a little bit of a taste. Ooh, ooh, that is so good. Okay guys, so this is really thick. I'm gonna bring it up close so you guys can see how thick it gets. You don't need to add any um, baking powder, flour, anything creative that you might think, you don't need to add it. This thickens up on its own. If you guys have seen my um, enchilada videos before, you know that this is how I coat my tortillas in order to make them pliable for me. Uh, you can warm them up, but for me, this is my best tip because I'm not too good at folding the ones that are just warmed up on the pan. Um, so this is my this is my go-to, guys. If you guys have a better way of doing this, go for it. All right, you just gotta warm up your tortilla a little bit and some oil. And I, I don't have that much oil in this one. It's like maybe a third of a cup of oil. Please be careful if you're doing this at home. I'm used to doing this, so it makes it a lot easier for me um, than using uh, tongs. All right, guys, I hope you're enjoying my special guest here. My sweetheart. Which I'm going to be the judge today. He's going to be the, the taste tester, the judge today. He's watching me cook. My sweet boy. Dad watches our videos during lunchtime, so you want to say hum do you want to say a message to Daddy? Do you love and miss him? Hey Dad, when you when you're at lunch, I hope you're watching this. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shout out to all those hardworking moms and dads that are working hard for their families grandparents, uncles, all of you. Shout out to you for working so hard for your family. Ooh, I think I have enough. One, two, six, 
eight, ten. I'm gonna do about twelve. Okay, let's get ready to assemble our enchiladas. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip your tortilla first into the sauce, okay? Then we're gonna add your ground beef. Add as much as you would like. Add your choice of blend cheese. Right now I'm using the Costco Mexican style blend. And it says that their blend contains a blend of Monterey Jack, medium cheddar, queso, quesadilla, and asadero cheese, which I really, really enjoy this. So let's make these really cheesy. Roll them up and set them to the side. All right, that setup's gonna work a bit better for me. Okay, so same thing with our next tortilla. I'm gonna do this to a few of them so we can just start the, the production line for these. The smell of this chili is life. I promise you, once you learn how to make your own chili, you're never gonna buy that canned stuff anymore. You know, one of the things that I enjoy the most about cooking, oop, that's my oven. I have it at 380 degrees. One of the things that I enjoy the most about cooking and sharing the recipes with you is that I have a lot of sweet ladies and gentlemen that message me directly and tell me how much they appreciate the recipes because a lot of them have lost their mothers or their mothers passed at a young age and they didn't get the chance to learn their family recipes. So I'm grateful that I can become part of your family in a different way and share these recipes with you guys. Let's go ahead and assemble. I think once you make your own enchiladas, it's difficult to uh, enjoy restaurant enchiladas. At least for me it is. You know what I forgot on the other ones? To put a little bit of this sauce in here. Got too excited cooking. <laughs> I got a few complaints that I have a very abrupt tone when I speak to my views club. But what I have to say is that my family's from the northern part of Mexico, which is Sonora, and we're very like cowgirl style, you know? We're tough, we move things along, and we're just joyful. And I think that's where my abrupt tone comes from. I don't mean to be, to sound rude. And then the other part is that I'm in the kitchen and I'm like in the zone, guys. I love being in the kitchen. I love, I love cooking for my family and showing you guys recipes or different ways to get through your day. Like, what am I gonna feed my family today? I remember feeling Feeling like that when I was rushing, when uh, my punky used to go to public school, I'd be like, what am I gonna make them today? <laughs> that was always rushing. Okay. I hope that one day I'm able to personally make you guys an enchilada how I make them. Because once, even though you have a recipe, once you have um, your own style, they taste different. Mine tastes very different from my mother's. I wish they taste like my mother's, but they don't. <laughs> All right, so now you can start pushing your tortillas to the side so you can make the space for all of them. Okay. Punky, you wanna try and make one? Sure. All right, hold on a second, let me wash my hands. 
since you know I am the special guest and I'll be the taste and I'll be the taste tester. He'll be the judge. Okay, did you see what mommy did? Yep. Okay, so here's your tortilla. All right, it's already dipped. So okay. what are we gonna put in there? We're gonna put in some carnita. Some carnita, some ground beef. Okay, let's see. Wow, look at you. Okay, and then. And then you're okay. gonna add add some a little bit of the sauce. Is that good? <laughs> Just a little bit, okay? Okay. Perfect. Okay, then we're gonna add some cheese. Yeah. And then you're gonna roll it up. Did you see how mommy was rolling it up? Mm -hmm. You're a professional, Punky. Okay, it's gonna be sticky. Okay. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me cry. Right here, baby. Right there. Is that the. Oh, you got two of them. You have to make sure you. There you go. Right there. Oh my gosh, you guys, yay! Ah, those hands! Ah. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You can lick your hands. Andale, andale, andale. Lick them or clean them up, whatever you want to do. Wow. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Mom. Here you go. All right, I'm going to do um, a few with just cheese on the side because my bebe doesn't really like. He's very particular about meat. Ganita's the bomb. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Squeeze this one in there. If you make these out of chicken, um, just use the same seasonings that I used for um, the ground beef. Okay, do you think you can pour some cheese in this bowl, baby? Oh, uh, sure. Thank you, sweetheart. Which bowl? And this one? Just a little bit, okay? Just so I can finish the other two. So nice to have such a great helper in my kitchen right now. Woohoo! More? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oh, there you go. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. It was too big, so I had to do some... some this you did two big hands fingers. yeah yes. see if I can squeeze another one in here a big cheesy one <laughs> see, can I I sure can there we go let me rinse my hands so we can get to the next step guys and this is where um, I work out of instinct so in here my uh, sauce is not going to be enough to pour over and it's such a forgiving sauce that you can just pour I'm going to pour uh, half a cup of water and it's best if it's warm water okay and what you're going to do now is that you're going to pour your, your chili all over it Whatever's on your plate, pour it on here. I think that's the thing with Mexican cooking. We use everything. <laughs> that's how I was raised. Don't leave anything aside. Use everything. Don't throw anything away. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're going to sprinkle a lot of your cheese. And I think that's the thing that makes your Tex-Mex style quesadillas so good because of the blends of cheese. And you have because to what, baby? Oh, and then you have to spread the cheese. Yeah, you do. It's, it's important to spread. It really is. And um, for the Mexican quesadillas, there's there's a battle. You have to use queso fresco. You have to use these things. Yeah, but when you don't have it available, it doesn't mean you can't eat enchiladas the way that you enjoy them. Right? 
-hmm. It's your house, you get to eat them however you want. This right here is a key ingredient to your Tex-Mex quesadillas. You gotta have some black olives. You just have to. Well, I don't really like olives. You don't like olives? Nah. Okay, I'll leave this spot over here for you without anything. Okay. Okay. And just spread as many as you like. Bebe loves... Olives. Yeah, loves olives. But if I can. Are you okay to pick them out? Yeah. All right, let's do that, okay? Or maybe you can try it this time and see what you think. Um, I'll try this time. Okay. Yeah, I think we have a lot in here. Let's go for all of them. And that's just one of the small can of uh, chopped um, black olives. On the top, you like onions, put some onions. You excited? The special ingredient, if I make that, it's gonna be the onions. The onions is your special ingredient? All right. So, I love onions so much. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put this in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. My oven usually takes 30 minutes, but depending on the heat of your oven, go take a look at it at 20 minutes, and if the cheese is not melted on the top, then you're not ready. You just, everything's already cooked, it just needs to be warmed up, and the cheese needs to melt. Okay, what did you want to see? And since you know you see the sauce on there, uh -huh. on the bottom. Yeah. What about the sauce, sweetheart? It's amazing. It's amazing, the sauce, yeah. All right, guys, so I'll see you guys in 20 minutes to see where we're at. Bye. All right, Views Club, this is what it looks like after 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine in about six more minutes, and then we're going to do a taste test. Oh, yeah. All right, you want to go closer to Mama? Sure. Oh, there you are. You're good. All right, we're gonna take one out and we're gonna taste test. But you have to be very careful, Punky, because it it's is hot. 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 It's, it's like, like chili lava. A chili <laughs> volcano. Oh my gosh, the chili volcano. Maybe All right, let me see how I'm gonna take it out. Well, chili volcano. Uh huh. That's a really cool nickname. Ah, it's oh, really hot. My nickname is Bull. All right, I'm gonna dress mine with some. Lettuce. All right. I'm gonna cut it. And I'm gonna blow it for you because it is so hot. I don't want you to hurt yourself. You guys can see it under all this lettuce. Remember, you say you're gonna try it with the black olives. Um, um, one that just one. Just one. One black olive in here, guys. Sour cream. Ooh, I'm scared. I'm gonna feed you like a little birdie. Ready? Okay. Try it now. Mm. What do you think of the black olive? Can oh. you taste it or it's not that big of a deal? I wouldn't taste it. I didn't, I don't really get get the I don't mm. even the the I think. <laughs> what? What are you trying to I say? Think, um, I didn't get the taste of it. The, you didn't the taste the black olive? I tasted it. So I guess I you're okay with You didn't like it? I do, but I do like the black olives, but okay. I just didn't get the super, um, super tasty tastiness. It didn't taste as good with the black olives to you? It did. It did. But if it doesn't, it's okay. You can just... I, I like the set. black olives. This is a story of our life. We're trying to figure out what flavors he can handle and which ones he can't, and then I we move it along. I can taste nothing with the black olives. All right. How's that? Hmm. I have somebody waiting to do a taste test. What do you think, Judge? It's good. All right, next. <laughs> it's my brother. I think they can, can you hold on tight to your life? Now this little guy right here, he loves black olives. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. All right, baby, get ready for this. It's hot, so. Are you nervous? You wanna say hello to everybody? They haven't seen Ew. you. <laughs> All right. Oh. Delicious. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for this recipe. I hope I made it a lot easier for you guys to follow. 
and um, keep sharing all your pictures I'm on Instagram views on the road I'm um, sharing your guys's views recipes I love when you guys share with me what you're eating that's the best way that I get to know you guys through food <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one bye adios